Welcome back to the Texans franchise on Madden 21, everybody. It's 2030, the Texans are 1-0. We played a really good game in week one. We're trying to forget about the AFC championship loss last season, and this helps. A big win to start the year, hoping to make another playoff run, and hoping to put together a strong start to the season. Two division games to start things off. Our next game here is against the Jacksonville Jaguars, a team that... I am interested in watching a game against this season. Doesn't have to be this one, but they did change quarterbacks. They now have Matt Taylor, who's been a starter previously with the Eagles. He's backed up more seasons than he started, but now he has a real chance, and he was player of the week in week one. This team is kind of interesting this year. Well, that wasn't too bad. 28-7, Texans score their second win in dominant fashion. Matt Taylor will not be player of the week this time. Shadon Roseman, three touchdowns, one interception. We sacked Taylor four times in the game. Penn ran for 43 yards, Bradham 41, Blue 40. I like getting these other running backs involved. George Ingram leads the team in receiving, 80 yards and the touchdown. David Bush, 62 yards, no scores in this one. Two touchdowns go to Cassius Fowler. Cordell Hillhouse, a fast start to the year. That's three sacks. Justin Johnson gets one. Ryan Ford, two for two on field goals, and one of them was from 50 plus. Let's do some upgrading here. We begin with Adrian Payton. I know he's only a 62 overall, but I do like where his coverage ratings are to start. And now that zone is a 70 already. Like, if we end up in a situation where the team doesn't have a lot of cap space or a lot of flexibility, you could end up seeing a player like Payton become a starter. Potentially. Here we have Montrell Russell. He is a really good run stopper. Do we want to work on the coverage at all? Is it worth it? I suppose if he were listed at inside linebacker, the field general upgrades would be ideal. So that's what we're going to do then. He's now listed as a middle linebacker. I think he could actually be the player that takes over for Kurt Reiner. And it's a coverage upgrade this time around. We would have to get a few more of those. Dre Tatum. I am not surprised that he's effective as this dime linebacker, but I didn't think he'd become a star the way he has. He's a lot of fun. Let's go with a run support upgrade here. 90 overall, Dre Tatum. Speed going up. He's starting to become a bit more like Jamari Akinjide every episode. Which, if you're unfamiliar, he's from my Broncos franchise, my Kalispell Dynasty on my main channel. Basically, imagine, like, Isaiah Simmons' ceiling, and that's Jamari Akinjide. 90 overall, Robert Penn. Don't get break tackle, was hoping for that rating in particular. Alright, let's take a look at the draft class now. We have a first round pick this year. At least we do right now. Quarterback is number one, then you have a couple edge rushers, three in a row, a corner, more edge rushers. Receiver is a lot more reasonable this season. Love to see that. Two running backs. What, do we actually have a balanced draft class here for one of the first times? This looks really solid. I mean, edge rusher is loaded. Defensive tackles actually weaker than normal, but I bet you there are like some fourth rounders that are actually really good And corner That's pretty deep And I actually think that this is the best spot for us to begin our scouting Figure out how deep this class is I talk about not being able to constantly pay these veteran free agents 15 million dollars a season So you have to find a rookie Looks like there's some good size in this draft class. There's a variety of archetypes as well. I mean, here you have Tim Giles. Awareness, zone, play rec, mid one. He might only be the fourth best corner in the class. We have Traylon Alexander, mid one talent, Marlon Stevens, late one, and Justin Sullivan. He's the early projected player, so he's going top five. 
Wow, the Chiefs put up 38 points against us, and we have lost our first game of the season. Patrick Mahomes, five touchdowns. Yeah, that'll happen to even the best defenses. Clyde edwards Elaire, 97 yards, but they ran the ball really well in this game. Penn did score three times, but it wasn't enough. Jonathan Overstreet scored twice. Kayla Mullen scored twice. Don't often see the defense have a game quite like this one. Yes, strength goes up for Steven Brown on this power upgrade. Agile is lower, but I wanted to see if we could get more strength, and sure enough, 86 now. Back to this corner class now, and there are a few overrated players, but... There should at least be four or five first round talents. Percy Davis projected to go late too. He's six foot two. Man coverage is a C plus. So if we want to target corner this year, we will have the chance. All right, now we just allowed 35 to Tennessee. What's going on with the defense these last two games? Roseman, four touchdowns. Doug Ward, four touchdowns. Robert Penn ran for 80. It seems like this running game is off to a pretty solid start. But what's happened to the defense now these last two weeks? We shouldn't be allowing passing yardage like this. George Ingram scores three times and it's not even enough. We got some pass rush in this game, a little bit anyway. But another loss for Houston. Also a new injury. It is to Leslie Good, a broken fibula. Okay, I'm glad we drafted Steven Brown. That means he is going to be playing at right tackle, which might be where he ends up playing permanently. Let's upgrade Ryan Ford. Accurate upgrade, kick accuracy, and awareness. A quarter of the way into the season, the Rams are scoring more points than anybody. We'll check on them. The Texans have scored 27.3, which is pretty solid. As far as points allowed, though, it's only a couple games that it's been bad. So it's been two really good games and two really bad games. The Rams are really intriguing, though, because they were able to add... An amazing receiver this year in the draft and he hasn't even played and they're putting up 32 points a game are you kidding me Greg Henson isn't seeing the field has he been hurt he must have been he didn't even play in week one did he have snaps in game two yeah he played one down they've thrown for 11 combined touchdowns this year nine for Jaleel Moody they're running the ball well. They have a lot of rushing touchdowns. Going into week six after our bye week, the Texans are actually in last place right now. Everybody else is above 500. Could this be the most competitive year in the AFC South we've seen? It's starting out that way. We get the Eagles here in week six. They are two and three on the season. We want to end this little two game losing streak and we have a breakout chance. Who do we have this time? It's an opportunity for George Ingram. Four touchdowns or 200 plus yards. Not expecting that to happen. We will get to upgrade Paul Sears. I think the physical upgrades will make some sense. The route running you could go with as well. I'd like to see catching traffic come up a little bit. Overall's not going up and he will get catching traffic plus three. Adrian Payton upgrading once again. We'll go back to zone. He becomes a 63. Two more zone coverage at 72. One more simulated game today. Houston bounces back defensively and win, only scoring 17 points. We allowed 208 yards in this game. Nick Carl, I have never heard of him in this series. He had one touchdown. More yardage than Rosemond, 168. The running game again, not disappointing. 70 for Penn, 35 for Blue. I suppose these averages aren't great. We just ran the ball 36 times between them. I mean, 
this is a uh, weird game plan here but at least we score the victory Sears gets a touchdown we love seeing that and that ends this losing streak thankfully nice pass rush day two still nobody's under 500 here in the division and the Jaguars have become the team to beat so now we have this matchup against the New York Giants I'm tempted to sim this game as well they're one in five it is not taking long for Adrian Payton to earn these upgrades as a rookie. Now a 64 zone coverage becomes a 73. He gets the awareness boost up to 64. Like at this rate, he's got a chance to play next year. Physical upgrade for Antonio Werner. A ton of ratings going up here. Love seeing that. A little boost here for Zach Jones in the coverage department. Man coverage going up. Wow, an overtime loss to the Giants who were 1-5. in five. And again, we allow a lot of passing yardage. 357, they get 127 on the ground. Daniel Jones, four touchdowns. Great day against us. What's happening to this defense right now? Cole Bass, 126 and 2. So, just like last year, we're not starting the season as strong as we would like. How many times did we sack Daniel Jones in this game and still lose, allowing like 500 yards? This doesn't make any sense. We sacked him 10 times and lost. You know what? Maybe a faster season is good for the series. What if we go all the way to week 10? Why not at this point? 3-3 three and three on the season. The standings are still pretty tight. I don't think we're trading anybody away here at the deadline. We want to do whatever it takes to get back to the playoffs. Alright, I think we have to be concerned about this team suddenly. We just lost 14-13. Where are the points? Clayton Kershaw, two touchdowns. Roseman, none. And sack six times. Manny Grubbs is starting! 71 yards against us. This run defense has been terrible. Wow, two catches, 106, and a score. That's how you make your touches count. You go 86 to the house. Steven Weaver. Interception for Marcus Childs. Three sacks for Chase Young. And that would have been against Makai Becton. I know this is a lot of simulating today but it just felt right for the episode, and a faster season, I think, is good for this series. But now, we're getting to this stretch of division games again. Frustration is mounting in the Houston locker room. George Ingram wants the football. We should probably get it to him. That's an important win. We take this season series from Indianapolis. We allowed 20 points in the fourth quarter. So, hard to say the order is scoring though, but we potentially blew somewhat a 34 point lead. But I imagine they didn't score a 20 point run after we added 10. Doesn't matter anyway, just good to win. Good to get four interceptions and six sacks in a game. We allowed five. Both teams ran the football almost identically pretty well. Troy Peel, a buck 22, two scores. Three for Amari Jones. We have not really seen those big performances from the receivers very often. We had the one from Ingram in a game we lost. Childs is getting some more playing time. He gets the pick. Ward gets three of them. So I know we've simmed a lot today. We don't normally move this quickly through a season. Today, it just felt like the right thing for the series. And now we find everybody tied at four and four. I don't know that I've ever seen that in my life. Four and four at the halfway point for all four teams. And now a matchup coming up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So right now we're looking at the number 16 offense and the 18th defense. Where you'd normally expect us to be potentially top 10 in both. Roseman 14 scores, 6 picks. Robert Penn, 530 on pace for a 1,000-yard season. We'll see if that maintains. George Ingram, the numbers are down, but not bad. Jones, 
not quite a 1,000 yard pace. Fowler, very similar numbers to him. Paul Sears, 26, 226, and one. A little bit less production than you'd like to see. Looks like some rookie struggles for Steven Brown at tackle. He's allowed nine sacks this season. And then for the defense, it feels like we're getting a lot of sacks. Ferris has seven, same with Carr. Hillhouse, Johnson, six and a half. Beverly with two. So, we're at the halfway point. Now we get to meet Jacksonville and Matt Taylor, Jeremiah Bradham once again. Should be a fun matchup. And let me know if you liked or didn't like this episode moving as quickly as we did. Obviously, Madden 22 is approaching, so I'm thinking about ways to speed things up a little bit. And with the team not changing a ton, simming a bunch of games in the beginning of the regular season didn't seem like a bad idea. So here's the matchup we're going to see today. If we win, we take the season series from them and Indianapolis. That would really help towards us going back to winning this division once again. Really nice upgrade there for Paul Sears, a 77 overall now. For Danny Arrington, just going to continue going with these deep threat upgrades. I think that's where we're going to focus his play. He could still become a really good deep threat. And field general again for Montreal Russell. A little more coverage and some tackling. Everybody's four and four. Let's just treat it like it's just a shortened season. It might as well just be an eight game season now. Fresh start, nothing else really matters. Let's go beat the Jaguars though and get that tiebreaker. I guess that matters. Underway and down below Tennessee just kicked off as well. We'll pay attention to their matchup as Rosemond is hit immediately. Starting at our own 25 though, two receivers top of the screen. And Robert Penn running to the left side. There's an opening. He'll run over Amari Jones and get 10 yards. Heading to the air on first down, and the pass is hauled in underneath by Paul Sears, and it looks like the rookie has a first down. Of course, it's actually second down in inches, and Robert Penn breaks the tackle, first down. Daniel Blue checks in, and Jacksonville's all over this play. Heavy run approach here for Houston for some reason. That sets up a third and ten. We go with Sears bottom of the screen. Jacksonville sending pressure. Pass caught. First down Fowler. Down the sideline. A big catch and run. All the way to the 28. Here's an empty look at the Jacksonville 26. Roseman with time, caught again by Fowler. He's got the first down. Sending four, protection, holding up for a little while and then Roseman has to throw it away. Third and 10, can still easily get a first down. Going trips to the right. Roseman six, protecting. He gets it away, back of the end zone! It's a touchdown for George Ingram! We have some really good 50-50 ball receivers. Devin Macklin was so good at that, we know Jones can come down with them the three times we try it in a season. And then George Ingram, just how good has he become? That's a great way to start the game. Jacksonville takes over. Matt Taylor almost intercepted. But Jacksonville seems to be a better team this season, but who knows who's still going to be in this division battle by the end of the year. Everybody's in it right now. Taylor completes on the outside, and that is a solid gain. But how did everybody start out like 4-2, and 3-2, and two, and all of a sudden... We all end up halfway to eight and eight. Third and three for Taylor. The pass is caught right in front of Lynn Cox for a first down. 
Running it to the right side here. There's an opening. And getting to midfield is Jeremiah Bradham. 534 yards on the season. His average would be 4.37. Pretty respectable. Two veteran running backs having good seasons in this game. Jacksonville at midfield. Another run. Bradham for a first down. Taylor on third down, barely gets the pass away, and it is incomplete. Contested by Dre Tatum. And the Texans are going to force the opening drive punt. This next drive for Houston is set to begin at their own 23. Not a very good punt. All right, let's keep it up. Good start. Two receivers to the right. Here comes Paul Sears, the exciting rookie. And Roseman waiting, throwing this one out of bounds. In this series, the Jaguars have had a really good secondary. Throwing against them hasn't been easy. They're not as talented as they once were. Flag down, that's going to be a roughing call. So first down. Cincinnati, still a team to beat, seven and one. They take on the Colts this week. Titans currently losing, thankfully. Off the play fake. Caught. And a pickup here of about five for Hairston. On second and five. Amari Jones to the outside. Gets a block from Penn. It wasn't enough. Russ Watson in the game now on third and two. It is a handoff up the middle, and Robert Penn gets the first. Roseman back to the air again. Quick throw to Ingram. First down to the Jaguar, 30. Roseman is 9 for 13. Nothing flashy, but a decent complimentary running game. An efficient passing game. This can get the job done. Another run for Penn, but this time he's met in the backfield. Definitely in field goal range, but hoping to keep this drive going. Third down and six. Again, Sears in motion. The pass goes out well shy of the sticks, but we should go up two scores. That is what we do. 10-0 Houston. Trying to stay in control of this one. Four on the rush. Taylor in trouble as he's thrown down by Jabari Carr. I still want to know how we had a simmed game where we allowed 500 yards and 300 plus passing yards while also sacking a quarterback 10 times. Off the hands! It nearly intercepted. Third and 19. Do not screw this up. Do not get roughing the passer. That is the most likely way for them to get a conversion here. Taylor sacked again. Jabari Carr takes over the drive. This punt doesn't even reach midfield, and the Texans will take over. Let's see if they can make it three scoring drives in a row to start this game. The first game against Jacksonville was a smooth victory. Hoping to repeat that today. On first down, passes out to Jones. He makes the catch at the 35. I do like the run pass balance that we've been having in this game as Penn picks up one. A lot of these runs coming with Russ Watson on the field. But now we're going back to the year on second down, I imagine. Just kidding. Nice block by Fowler, and Penn will be very close. I don't have the second and long runs being all that common. First down, Penn inside the 20. I know it's 4.4 a carry. It's nothing earth-shattering, but it's definitely refreshing. Daniel Blue checks in. Wouldn't mind another run. And Blue is bottled up. Here comes Jones. It's second down. Penn's back in the game. Roseman floats to the end zone. Just getting rid of it. 
And it's third down. Jacksonville hoping for another stop. We can convert by getting to the eight. Roseman in trouble, gets it away, and it's off the hands of a defender. He tried to get it to Ingram. This 50-50 doesn't go our way. We do add three, it's 13-0 Houston, still a strong first half. Jacksonville really hasn't done much well other than prevent the touchdown at the end of those two drives. We quickly get the football back, penalties help us get into plus territory. We're already in field goal range. Ryan Ford's warmed up. He's kicked twice already. We're taking this inside the 10. And we will, on third and goal, get a Daniel Blue touchdown. How about a 20-0 lead? Is Jacksonville going to make this a game or not? I expected a bit better in this one, but they're struggling to even get first downs. I don't even know if they have one. They have to, right? Like, how do you not have a first down by now? 105 to go in the first half, and it's third and one. They can't even convert that. Hillhouse gets the sack. What a dominant start for Houston. That right there is a first down for Jeremiah Bradham. Yeah, they definitely had a first down on, like, their opening drive. I think they had a couple of them. But they haven't had many beyond that. On to the second half. This time they're going to run it. Jeremiah Bradham gets through the hole and into the secondary. Inside the 20 and he'll take it all the way down to the 1. That's a 57 yard run against his former team and the boost Jacksonville needed. Well does that help us understand a bit of the run defense issues this season. Jeremiah Bradham will not get into the end zone. Good stop by Ferris. But can you do that two more times? They go to the shotgun. Press coverage on the outside. Chenault in motion. And now they want to throw it. Chenault's open. And Taylor's taking the sack. It's Beverly. Great timing. I think he could have had Chenault if he didn't hesitate and just threw it quick. Third and goal now from the 11. Taylor trying this again. Waiting. Now firing outside. Wide open. How'd we lose track of him like that? Touchdown Jacksonville. Great update down below. Thank you Chargers. Helping us out right now. Up 17 to nothing. Hope that score holds. Nice job here by Robert Penn beginning this drive with an 18-yard catch and run. This is Penn on second down. Nice tough run, falling ahead through contact. Third and short. I got to think we're running this football again. And we will trying to go outside. First down, Daniel Blue. He's across the 40. Here's a third and 11. Right on the edge of field goal range. Roseman can't take the sack. He'll get the check down to Fowler. And there's nobody close to him. All the way to the 14-yard line. Fowler crosses 500 receiving yards on the season. Solid year for him. And now from the Jaguar 14. Looked like pretty good coverage there on the slants. Try it again on second down. Sears isolated here at the bottom. Let's see him get the football. Jones is the motion man. Roseman scans. Waiting for something to open up. And he gets sacked. Tennessee is on the board down below. Don't let us down, Chargers. Roseman to the end zone. Out of space. Almost picked off. Jacksonville's done a pretty good job defending on their side of the field. Ryan Ford kicks another field goal to put us up 16. Now you just want to see us slow down the running game and force their passing game to beat us. They haven't passed the ball very well. Jeremiah Bradham, he will end up close to a first down. Just a yard away from 100 now. And they'll be looking to get it here, it appears. 
Straight ahead. First down, Bradham. A minute 34 to play in the third quarter. Trying to run it again, Bradham. Stopped at the 41 as Childs is shaken up. I noticed he's been getting a lot of playing time. I'm not sure if the depth chart got messed up at all. We're sending some pressure, and that one is going to the bench. That was not a very good play for Matt Taylor, who is now 6 for 16, 47 yards. This is one of the worst passing performances I believe the Jaguars have had against us in the series. Good try, Baxter. I think when I moved Montrell Russell to middle linebacker, it messed with the depth chart. So Childs has been getting a lot of those snaps that should have been going to Russell. I wish it wouldn't do that. I wish that when you set the settings to all be manual, that it actually allowed it to stay that way. Roseman, third and nine. This one is broken up for Fowler. Jacksonville really wants to get back in this game. Last play of the third quarter. It's Taylor on second down. Penalty marker down and incomplete. It was dropped. And a holding call. What a mess. Jacksonville backed up. We accept the penalty. They motion out Bradham on second down and 19. Taylor gonna take a shot way downfield. Not even close. Taylor, third and 19. Ferris is there. He knocks it down. That didn't take long. That is a much better performance here for this defense. Dominant against the pass the way we are supposed to be. Rosemond on first down. Pass caught by George Ingram. It's a play fake. Roseman across the middle. There's George Ingram. He's across the 40 now for a first down. It's third down and five. Roseman fires outside. That's close. I don't think Sears got the first down. He is ruled short. It's now a three-score game. This one is looking over unless Jacksonville can make something happen on this drive. And that's incomplete. Another bad throw from Matt Taylor. This is a really bad game. 8.24 to go in the ball game. Pass caught. This one is going to be close to a first down. The ball came out, but it just rolls out of bounds. It might have cost them a couple of yards. I'm waiting on this Tennessee update down below now. Third and three for Taylor. A lot of hesitation. And eventually on target for LaVisca Chenault. That's got to be like his first catch. Throwing on first down. Taylor in more trouble on the move. He's got an open receiver. It's Bradham. Not bad. Third and seven for Jacksonville. Taylor throws a wobbler that is caught shy of the marker. Now I imagine they're going for it. They should. And they go with three tight ends in the game. Jeremiah Bradham is the running back. And Bradham will not get it. Turnover on downs. Houston takes over. This is the defense that can win us a championship. I don't know what happened in a few of those losses today, but this is a truly dominant performance, and it looks to be our second against the Jaguars. Los Angeles down below, 24-3 over Tennessee. Looks like the Chargers are helping us out today, and we should be in first place by the end of the episode. It's a play fake on third down. Roseman for Jones, and there's a conversion. Running this to the outside. Daniel Blue showing off the speed as he makes his way to the 40. So it does appear we are a much better running team this year. 
The offensive line is still pretty good. We've been developing Rashad Walker and Randy Wallace at center. Like, this is more like it. We're actually looking like a pretty good rushing team. And we're running the clock down here, impressively. Another first down for Penn. Looks like the last play of the game right here. Once again, Houston will win in dominant fashion against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Two big season sweeps against the two teams I'm most worried about. And then you have Tennessee down below trying to mount a late comeback, but looks like they're going to fall the four and five. That is the ball game, everybody. Nice win for Houston and overall an up and down episode. Some positives, I think, going into the rest of the season. We have very limited injuries right now. We had the one for Leslie Good, so thankfully the team is healthy. And we have a better running game. That was the case in the simulating. It was certainly the case in the game today. With a better running game, I think that could help make a big difference for us trying to make it further than we did a year ago. I think the main thing is just taking care of some of this defensive inconsistency. Because we can put up games like this, we shouldn't be allowing like 35 points to okay teams. I mean, I'm okay allowing 5 touchdowns to Patrick Mahomes, but the Daniel Jones game just still doesn't make any sense to me. Good game though for Houston. We move to five and four. Wow, the Colts ended up winning their game, actually. They were taking on a really good Bengals team that was seven and one. But we do have that tiebreaker against them, so it only matters if they can win more games than us. So it's a very competitive division this year, but we should be able to hopefully take care of this second half of the season. We only have one more division game, so we've done what we can. We've swept the Colts, we've swept the Jaguars, we might split against Tennessee. But hopefully next episode we see this team get closer to returning to the postseason. Here are the league leaders as we wrap this one up. Most touchdowns, Cody McDonald has 26, Patrick Mahomes 25. Rushing yards, Cam Akers is number one. That Rams running game has been really good this season. Ours has been solid as well. DJ Morris, 818 yards. He is now a 99 with Minnesota. George Ingram, not toward the top this season. Still having a good year, but it's down by his standards. Three players in the AFC have nine sacks. Jabari Carr is one of them. In the NFC, Chris Townsend has 9.5 to lead the NFL. That will do it for this episode, everybody. Let me know what you thought down below in the comment section. There's more Texans on the way. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.